Welcome to another video. This problem is mind twisting unless you do the correct substitution. Now see what happens. We don't know what this exponent is and that's what we're looking for, but we don't know this. And it doesn't matter how hard you try to simplify what is in here, it does not become this. It just stays strangely different. And there is a subtraction here, but you cannot subtract. You cannot factor out the exponents. Ah. You just wonder, how would you know what X is? There was a time I was trying to fine tune my integration skills and I came about a kind of substitution that transforms algebra into trig and trig becomes easier. It's called the Weierstrass substitution. I've used it in a number of videos. Um, I'll leave the link in the description to some of those videos for integration. And that's what I'm gonna use in this one because when I tried it, it worked. Let's get into the video. Now, what is the bias to our substitution? It says, if you see the variable squared, replace it with tan theta. If the variable is not squared, replace it with tan half theta and see what your life becomes. And that's what I'm gonna do here because I have a squared variable here. I don't have anything squared here. I cannot use tan theta. I'll have to use the tan half theta. So we're gonna do that. It's gonna look a bit messy at the beginning, but things are just gonna smooth out and you become smooth. Okay, let's do it. So what we have is, I'm going to say, let a, which is the variable, be equal to tan theta over 2. Okay, I'm going to leave it this way. In fact, in order to make my life easy, I can replace it with a. I can say let it be tan a. Okay, just leave it because I don't want to be writing theta over 2 all the time. But now we know that um, theta over 2 is the same thing as A. So I'm going to go here and replace A with 10 capital A. But I know ultimately it will be theta over 2. You'll see why we have to use theta over 2 at the end. Now we have um, 1 plus this is going to be A squared is going to be 10 squared A over 2 tan A. This is raised to the power x minus, what do I have here? I have um, 1 minus tan squared a over 2 tan a. And this is also raised to the power x, and this is equal to 1. Can I do any simplification right now? I am going to, can I sim? Oh, 1 plus tan squared a is secant squared a right? Nice. So, now this is the one that requires some work. I already know that I'm going to get rid of the tangent because when you're dealing with trigs, unless you see something like secant, don't stay with tangent. Quickly go back to sine and cosine. So I'm trying to see how to change this immediately to sine and cosine because I don't want to work through this whole... Um... Oh, wait. Yeah. This is actually the reciprocal of tan 2a. Do you see that? This is the reciprocal of tan 2a. I can't believe it. But I'm not going to use it. What I'm really thinking now is how to transform this from all the tangents 
to sine and cosine. Because sine and cosine would be easy for me to work with. I'm not so, I can't remember all the identities for tangent. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to multiply the top because I want to undo this tan squared A. I'm going to multiply the top by cosine squared A, multiply the bottom by cosine squared A. Okay, if I multiply the top by cosine squared A, I'm going to have, watch this, cosine squared A minus, if I multiply this by cosine squared A, it's going to become sine squared A. Nice. If I multiply the bottom by cosine squared A, it's going to be 2 times, hey, it's tan A times cosine A, cosine A. But I know that cosine A times tan A is sine A, so it's going to be sine A cosine A, so it's going to be sine A cosine A. Nice. Raised to power X equals 1. Okay. I already saw something. Do you guys know that cosine squared A minus sine squared A is cosine 2A? Yes, that's the double angle identity for cosine. It shows up in four ways. You want to make sure you know all the four ways. I talk about this when we do integration. That's it. This is cosine 2A. Now, is there something I can do with this? Secant squared A, if I drop the secant squared down here, what would I get? Well, let's see. This is going to be 1 over cosine squared, and the cosine squared drops. Oh, it's going to be exactly what is here. 1 over, this is going to be sine 2a. Nice. Raised to power x. And we're going to do the same thing here. This is cosine 2a minus, let's go, cosine 2a over, and under is going to be sine 2a to the x equals 1. Now there's something I see. If I decide to multiply every term by sine 2a raised to power x. If I multiply this by sine 2a raised to power x, what I'm going to have here is 1. It's going to be 1 raised to the power x, which is just 1. So that's good. If I go here and multiply this by sine 2a raised to the power x, I'm going to have just the top remaining to be cosine 2a raised to the power x. And then this is 1 times sine 2a raised to the power x is going to be sine 2a raised to power x. You see how things are beginning to look nice? I'm sure you can guess what the answer is at this point. Because what I'm going to do now is put the sine and cosine together, and I'm going to put 1 on one side. So I'm going to have 1 is equal to sine 2a raised to power x plus cosine 2a raised to power x. Ah. Now, what did we say a was? a was theta over 2. I just did the replacement because I didn't want to be writing it frequently. So I can say that sine to the x theta plus cosine to the x theta is equal to 1. This equation has only one solution. Just one solution. X must be, yeah, you get it, it's two. So, Sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1. And never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.